I want to finish up, Mr. Speaker, by reading a message from a doctor this morning to all our leaders. Thank you, Governor, for being our voice. I said in the National Health Conference a few weeks ago, and the PM told us that we needed to care more, do more, and that we doctors are highly paid. I felt insulted because we had not received any money to do our work. We walk, drive to eight post health centers in difficult geographical areas with no road accessibility, and sometimes we often buy medicines for our patients. Could the responsible department, maybe in January or February or whenever we sit, bring in some m &E reports and tell the people of Papua New Guinea what's happened to these massive public investment funds that have been spent? I'm sure Papua New Guineans want to know, because life blow you know, Senis Ligli. I am now. By next year, this government will have spent a total of $145 billion from 2020 to 2025. This is an alarming thing that you may not come now. No one will time you kiss him on the report on this floor on this massive expenditure. Departments get 300, 400, 500 million, and there is no accountability on this floor, Mr. Speaker. One province I hear received 280 million kina, and they bought buildings in Port Mosby with that. So, you know, Sipik or Simbu or Central or New Island. Western province. Who side through it, Kisim? Sample scale blood desla one billion treasurer. Oh. All provinces have only received thirty percent of their grants oh, as of now. Yeah. All provinces. And report blood play it. You can go and read the money for. PNG, UPNG, Unitech, UNRE, and University of Groka have only received twenty percent of their funds. They are not in this house to speak. Wow, wow. All in money blood. So rather than you may just show him all when him have all go wrong, Mr. Speaker, me like give him all sample free advice on how all can fix him economy. Honorable uh, Governor for Isipik. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker. How are we securing the future, Mr. Deputy Speaker? Is it budget repair or economic repair? The opposition represents the views of those who disagree with the way our country is being managed, Mr. Speaker. So, for those who feel they don't have a voice in this House, Mipla opposition in Makim Yubla. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not. 28 billion, six records in a row. Let me acknowledge the hardest working minister in government, because it can't be easy for the Treasurer managing special requests from government MPs daily. And also, let me acknowledge that this is the first time the Treasurer has not brought a supplementary budget to the floor. Congratulations, yes. Treasurer. Yes. That's the message. Congrats. Thank you, Treasurer, for the re re reduction in uh, GST. I think the bag of goodies you received in the early part of this year <laughs> may have jolted your heartstrings a little bit. Thank you for raising a lot of revenue every year. I give you an A plus, Treasurer. However, this budget and any other budget is not just a money raising tool. The budget needs to have an impact on the, on the lives of our people and it has to impact the health of our economy. Mr. Treasurer, while you have been working really hard, I keep wondering whose job is it to repair the economy? Mr. Speaker, I have a problem with the transparency on actual cash transfers. Big problem. Early this year, the Treasurer failed to table the final budget outcome for 2023. Yes, yes, yes. yes. In that report, which came out of Treasury, a total of one billion kina was transferred to certain provinces, as indicated in that report. To this day, we have not been told which special provinces received this one billion kina. No, no. No, no. Not 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 one province I hear received 280 million kina. My goodness. And they bought buildings in Port Mosby with that. Oh. So, you know, Sipik or Simbu or Central or New Island, Western province. who side through it, Kisim, Sample scale blood desla one billion treasurer. I hope. Maybe in January or February, when we sit again, you can bring that report to the floor. I am now. 
They are very large capital items. And our good Minister for Finance who just spoke, I asked him about 1.15 billion last week. And he denied any knowledge of it. So I remind you, good Finance Minister, on page 230 to 235, volume 2, part A, of this budget that we are going to pass now next year, you are being given another 1.15 billion. Tubla now? When are you going to tell the people of Papua New Guinea what you have done with that money? This is not million, this is billion. 2.3 billion. We have to know. The people need to know. You know, can point Lohap. You talk, you know, Sabaya. Now me talking, you paid them, stop long end. I have serious issues with cash transfers to agencies, Mr. Speaker. According to the 2024 MAIFO, which the good minister just quoted, and which was released two weeks ago, five months late, yes. all provinces have only received 30% of their grants as of now. Yeah. All provinces. And report, you play it. You can go and read the MAIFO. Opposition leader, only one black copy, stop As of yesterday, when I spoke to my Provincial Administrator, ECPIC is still owed 50 million in grants. The Provincial Health Authority is owed 16.7 million in grants. And of that 1.15 billion that Stablo Handblong, Minister Blong, finance, 10 million Kinablo ECPIC, I mean loose. Oh, please, 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 please. All PHAs around the country have only received 40% of their grants for this year, as we sit in this house, according to your reports. Your reports. PNG, UPNG, Unitech, UNRE, and University of Groka have only received 20% of their funds. They are not in this house to speak. Wow, wow. When we were debating the terrorism bill, me being like Hatim, Minister of Police, until I checked and realized that of the 629 million promised to police, the police only received 10 million of their 200 million PIP. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And of their operational funds, all police wow. is in 30% of all. That's right. My goodness. It is for that reason I did not question the minister because I know the police have not received their funding. So, this new 697 million budget for police, I think before you may pass him, and I, in the response of the treasurer, the treasurer needs to tell us. Of that 190 million still owing to the police, are you going to pay it in the next three weeks? Or by you add him again next year and 200 million, we will promise him all can now long more. We all want solutions to law and order. But the agency tasked with doing this frontline work are not given the money. So a mouse warata sold now. True, true. Oh, soon. When? Next week, huh? Next week. Next okay. Week, huh? Tomorrow. My goodness. ME for impact and budget outcomes. Next year's budget, there's 7 billion in PIP. This year, there was 10 billion in PIP, Mr. Deputy Speaker. So over six budgets, a total of 50 billion will have been spent in public investment programs. No other government in the history of Papua New Guinea will have spent this kind of money on PIP. My Could the responsible department, maybe in January or February or whenever we sit, bring in some m and &E reports and tell the people of Papua New Guinea what's happened to these massive public investment funds that have been spent? I'm sure Papua New Guineans want to know because life blown in Osenis Ligli. This government needs 13 years to repair the budget, they say. Do they also need 13 years to repair the economy? We know repairing the budget requires a lot of borrowing and printing of money. What do we need to repair the economy? Can they tell us as well? While the government busies itself with repairing the budget, who is repairing the massive damage to our economy? Mr. Deputy Speaker, by next year, this government will have spent a total of 145 billion from 2020 to 2025. This is an alarming thing that you may not come now. Not at one time you may kiss him one report, this is the floor on this massive expenditure. Departments get 300, 400, 500 million, and there is no accountability on this floor, Mr. Speaker.
What always happens is that Prime Minister and Ministers will say, me blah give him you blah PSIP na DSIP, passing mouse na golo place na walk. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the PSIP and DSIP constitutes only 4% of the budget. By you may look look no 4% no budget na passing I no 96% of the budget. You may talk in public no look look no 4%. Na try no 94% there you may item no side. Brilliant magic tricks. Three years ago, as chairman of plans and estimates, I warned the government about borrowing too much money due to my concerns that it would drive inflation at a time when the overall productivity of our economy was poor. Mr. Deputy Speaker, what the government has done is very creative, very cunning, and very sneaky. By borrowing money and dropping it into the economy, they grew nominal GDP by 137 billion, and meantime, real GDP only grew from 66 billion to 76 billion. So in the same period, where nominal budget grew by 58 billion, real GDP only grew by 10 billion. Now, no talk piscine. Nominal GDP, I mean we can talk also German GDP, because you throw my money go inside. Now I'm by go big plan. Real GDP is what actually happens in the economy, through, through something. So our real productive economy only grew by 10 billion. So me look no even government, it is your challenge to change that. You can't allow this to continue because that gap is exactly the living crisis that our people feel in their pockets. It is based on the true GDP. You know, this like German, German nominal GDP, 137 billion, you may fight in Brussels. I have some more concerns. The good treasurer, the member for New Island, and my good friend, keeps talking about deep budget holes. Yes, yes, yes. I want to show him some budget holes that he, he ignored in his statement. So, on volume 3A, page 555 to 5, uh, and 554, we see that Works Department is going to receive about 1.6 billion, mostly for Connect PNG and for other roads. I want to say that there is a big improvement from the 600 million this year. I also note that there's 300 million for arrears for connect PNG contractors. So, tripla money is straight there. You know, I thank you for finally trying to balance it, but let me raise another concern. Total PNG contracts, uh, total connect PNG contracts now stand at around 10 billion kina. Wow. wow. Because the last time I raised the issue, I know the minister came to this floor and said it was 7 billion. Now, Mr. Speaker, finance minister or works minister need to table all of those contracts in Parliament, because this is a 10 billion year, it is a liability. Wow. It is not part of the 64 billion kina debt, and what you are doing a lot of times is giving a contract. In the past, when you give a contract for 300 million, you are supposed to take the 300 million and put it into a works trust account. You are not doing that anymore. You are giving a contract into the future. So, at the next sitting, I urge whichever minister it is, finance that manages contracts or works that manages the actual building of the roads to table all of the contracts so the people of Papua New Guinea can survey. Yes, yes, yes. Two weeks ago, the Secretary for the Attorney General said in the newspapers that there are almost 10 billion kina in claims against the state. Mr. Speaker, we need a briefing from the Attorney General so that our leaders of Papua New Guinea can be aware of what are these potential liabilities sitting off the books. We need that the total claims of 10 billion at least in a summary report presented to the members of parliament, Mr. Speaker. In Treasury, you will notice that there's a 299 million budget there under 207 to pay for arrears. Now, this is the arrears here. What is the total number? Is it 6 billion? Is it 7 billion? Could the treasurer table a report on this floor to tell the people of Papua New Guinea what is that bill? Because it is not part of the 64 billion official debt that we are talking about. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I received a communication from the Employers' Federation of Papua New Guinea 
This is something that many of us suspected over time. Now, our businesses, our honest, genuine businesses, based on the fact that the government automatically removes 10% GST, they are owed between 3 and 4 billion in GST rebates. Now, they have written to the government, and the government refused to respond to them. Now, that is a liability, because in order to pay them back, in this budget book, we have to make an allocation to pay them back. IRC cannot give them the rebates. So there's three or four billion. Mr. Deputy Speaker, 30,000 genuine businesses have applied for these rebates, and they are still waiting. This government is killing honest and genuine businesses by withholding rebates that they are owed. Contingent liabilities. And I want to thank uh, the Treasurer and the Treasury team. I have to say this MAIFO has been the best one uh, beating previous years because of the amount of detail. There's 8.7 billion in contingent liabilities sitting there that are not part of the 64 billion official debt. I note also that the additional equity for PNG LNG, around 2.8 billion or $692 million, is not captured anywhere. So I want to ask where is that liability being held? The other one is the loan for the purchase of aircraft for Air New Guinea. And I note also that the people of Papua New Guinea are giving 300 million kina to Air New Guinea next year. So, that's the 3.4 billion kina dinau lo bai mo nubla balus lo Air New Guinea. M bai mi putim lo wanem hap. If I add it up, that gives us 6.2 billion in additional loans that are sitting off the books. Suppose me Eddie Mulgada Desla number, that's 45 billion kina in potential debts that are not part of the 60 federal debt. Now, Mr. Speaker, future governments are going to pay by then, but that's a long, long time to wait for the people of Papua New Guinea. Oh. On the 200 billion kina economy, let me just say that. And, you know, I quote our good Melanesian Prime Minister. He tells us that the economy is growing so rapidly compared to previous governments. Yes, in nominal GDP only. And that's only true for government finances. It's not true for everyone else. The only people that seem to be making good money are Connect PNG contractors. Um, no, no. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the fastest way to achieve a 200 billion kina economy is to devalue the kina. You devalue it, and suddenly you have a 200 billion kina economy. So we are on target to achieve that goal because we are developing the kina. Okay. Not so smart, are we? <laughs> On the debt to GDP ratio, again, very sly, very smart, very cunning. Because the Fiscal Responsibility Act requires that the debt to GDP ratio is calculated against nominal GDP. Mr. Deputy Speaker, they're very smart. They just borrow the money, throw it in, and it pushes the debt to GDP ratio down. You can print money to do that, and that's what we've been doing. So it looks good on paper, but all man merry law, outside here, all pilim pen. So this printing money, which is brilliant for balancing government books, borrowing money, getting money out of central bank, is a brilliant trick. But I want to thank the Honorable Richard Masere and uh, NSO for releasing the real numbers. Let me congratulate you, Minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. Best time. Thank you. Thank you. Another alarming development, and you know, I like the fact that the Treasurer gave us a very short, uh, I think his shortest budget speech yeah, right. so far. So it's a very short one. Thank you, Treasurer. Nothing to brag about. Yeah. The interest payments were not mentioned. Three billion this year. Next year, 3.5 billion, as the uh, Deputy Opposition Leader and Shadow Treasurer said. Now that number is going to grow. 12% of next year's budget, envelope back in Dinautaso. Why is the government so quiet on these things? Very sneaky. These are ninja tactics, Mr. Deputy Speaker. So rather than you may just show him all when I'm have all go wrong, Mr. Speaker. Me like give him all sample free advice, lo how law can fix him economy. The missing medicine for our economy lies in the real private sector. Not your Connect PNG contractors, not your medicine suppliers, but the real private sector. Yeah. 
taxpayers. The real ones that pay taxes. Not those that you are renting and buying offices from, the real ones. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the government promised the people of Papua New Guinea one million jobs. In this policy document, our good treasurer tells us that they are only producing 10,000 jobs a year. So, you want to fix real GDP? You need real jobs, not paper jobs. Give the people of Papua New Guinea the one million jobs you promised. And you want to know how you do that? Well, first of all, get the real private sector going. Pay them back the money that you owe them. Because you bloody now long on put the money going inside the budget. Pay them back so they can get their businesses going. And they can employ people and help you to create jobs. Why now you bloody one thing also in this budget 28 billion year by creating work? 28 billion year. And creating 28,000 jobs that's on Connect PNG. It's not creating jobs anywhere else. That's it. It's keeping 28,000 people employed. That's it. Not good enough. In the 2023 business survey of 100 business CEOs in PNG, by the International Trade Administration, the business people in Papua New Guinea listed the following as the biggest impediment to doing business. Number one. Yes. Interrupt your speech. Your 20 minutes. Of debate slaps. Can I take 10 minutes from the opposition leader? I would ask you to. Uh, <laughs> okay, let in, me finish up. Can I finish up? Incorporate your speech. I'll, I'll finish up. Is that okay? Yes. I want to finish up, Mr. Speaker, by reading a message from a doctor this morning to all our leaders. Thank you, Governor, for being our voice. I said in the National Health Conference a few weeks ago and the PM told us that we needed to care more, do more, and that we doctors are highly paid. I felt insulted because we had not received any money to do our work. We walk, drive to aid posts, health centers in difficult geographical areas with no road accessibility and sometimes we often buy medicines for our patients. Honorable Governor, I remind you again that your 20 minutes now. have lapsed. I just read you something from a doctor. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I will Thank table you. the rest of the documents.